Hello and thank you for watching the Tax Processors Plus training video. Um, we're going to try to make this as quick and painless as possible and really just give you a, a high level overview of the, the tax software platform for the 2015 tax season preparing returns for 2014 tax year. For those of you that used the, the software last year, there have been significant improvements made to it and that should allow for uh, faster processing, quicker accessing of information, as well as uh, capturing the taxpayer signature using your mouse. So first thing to note, this is 100% web-based tax software. You don't have to install any software. You don't have to uh, run any updates or uh, worry about networking your office. All that you need to do is open a web browser, any of them, although uh, we highly recommend Chrome. It seems to be the fastest and most dependable. Um, and also gets the uh, the fewest bugs. Tax, uh, so go ahead and use Chrome. The website address is taxplus.cloudtaxoffice.com. You can see that up here in the URL. I'm going to highlight it real quick. And once you enter that in, you go ahead and add it to your favorites and pin it to your uh, your favorite bar, and you're in you're in good shape. So taxplus.cloudtaxoffice. I'm logging into the demo office, which is used just to not clutter your actual database. I'm using Tax Plus as my username and tax or test TP test TP as my password, all lowercase. I'm gonna go ahead and log in here and visit my beautiful office here. I'm not gonna remember that password. But very simply working our way from top to bottom, we're only gonna focus on this first item here and minor on the second. Start a new tax return. You can see that it says a brief explanation of what that it's asking for, what that section is used for. And then over here on the right hand side, select would be to access that. Now you're going to see this theme, this consistent theme of providing you with very clear, concise information throughout the software platform. So if you can read and you can read semi well, you should be able to do a very good tax return and a very complete tax return in this platform. Dropping down one client list. This is for returns that you've already created and you need to access them again to, I don't know, add in a W-2. Maybe you just only created an estimate. Configuration. This is where you do all your setup. Now we will do the majority of that for you so you don't have to really worry about it. But if you needed to verify some information, add a preparer in or uh, what have you, you're going to go into this configuration. We got reports. Lots of them. We print checks for the bank products. You're going to click right there. And three prior years worth of tax software. If you need to do a 2013, 2012, or 2011, they're right there for you. Very, very simple to access and uh, to do there. But we're going to focus on start a new tax return. I'm going to click select. 7216, consent to use. Need to get one of those signed by the taxpayer. It's a, kind of an IRS rule. And then we're going to create a tax return. And I'm just going to pound in some data. Click continue. Once we've created that, it's going to provide me some early tax season information. Don't even bother reading it. Just click continue. But it's basically telling you that we're early in the tax season and things can change. Okay. From here, important to note that the program works very much like we are taught to read as children. And nothing changes throughout our life. We read from the top to the bottom and from the left to the right. So the program is going to work us through that process, starting with basic information, filing status, personal to dependents. And then we jump to federal. We go to income deductions, adjustments, and so forth. The program is also going to present us with two different options when you're entering data. You're basically going to get the, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to click right there and just enter it. And then I need a little bit more help. So in this case, if we needed help determining our filing status for this taxpayer, we can click there. It's going to ask us a series of questions and lead us to the appropriate response for that taxpayer situation. I'm going to click continue here. And I'm going to put in our information. Tax plus. And they're born on 10, 10 of 1978. Occupation, they are a tax preparer as well. And then we just jump down to the address information. 255 West Boulevard. Oh, it's already in there. Sweet. 
and I'm just going to throw in a Florida State return just to show you that it does pull up nationally the uh, based off of the zip code, the city and state there for us. Also, the program, because we are recording this video in early December when we rolled the software forward, um, the program does not have a state tax return in it currently. So we will not be touching on how to do a state tax return because we don't have one to show you. If you wanted to see how that worked, go ahead and drop back a, a year in the software, create a return in 2013, and you'll be able to see how the, uh, the state tax return works. Okay, Very similar to the Fed. Going to hold your hand the whole way. Okay. Do you have any dependents or qualifying persons you need to claim? So we're on our dependent section. Last part of basic information. Sure. I got a kid. And the kid's name is Kid. Last name plus. And he's on 10, 10 of 2010. Social security number, something like that. Relationship. Son. Live with us for 12 months. If they were older but a full-time student, you click there. It drops down the school name. God forbid they were disabled or um, getting needing any assistance, but you can go ahead and put their disability right in there. Go ahead and click continue on from that section. And this is basically some credits that may or may not apply to you. Would you care to know about that? Sure. It's basically once you've read it, you don't need to click on it anymore because it's more or less, unless you have a re really unique situation, um, it's going to be similar information all the way through. If we had another dependent we needed to add, click Add. You need to edit the one you already entered, click Edit. You want to get rid of them both or get rid of them, just go ahead and click Delete. If I click Continued here, this is where things differ. For us, us that used the platform last year, this Quick File option was not available to us. Okay, Continue is going to take you through the method that you used last year. Um, it provides a little more hand-holding. Um, but you're still able to jump around and enter things very quick. The quick file method is really your quick and dirty, get it done, simple tax return. And the reason being is because we're going to create a list of all the forms that we need. I'm just going to type W2. I'm going to type in uh, 1099, let's say it was uh, G or 1099 interest. doesn't really matter for the point. I've got 2441 and uh, some education tuition credit 8863 so it's going to take us through in sequence how we entered these forms right down the line so we're going to start with our w2 9876543321 is a bogus employer we entered into the database we made uh, eighteen thousand nine hundred fifty dollars we had seven hundred and fifty in withholdings and if you had a state go ahead and click add state you can add as many states as you would like to the w2 we're going to click continue and you're going to see our refund start to calculate up here. The refund does take into consideration your income for the purposes of EIC calculation. Although we have not answered the 8863 EIC due, due diligence form, it is still taking it, basically considering it until, until you're no longer eligible. Okay, we'll click continue here. Next form, interest income. Maybe we had an account at uh, Chase Bank and we had some interest of uh, 250 bucks click continue and then I'm on to my dependent care expenses right down the list that we created right I'm gonna click add I'm gonna put in their name that it was a social security and they were watched by uh, this lady care provider and the address is 251 Oops. Um, sunny days street <laughs> and three three zero zero one six and we'll put in a phone number and the amount we paid twenty five hundred bucks three zero five so forth <laughs> click continue on to uh, part two which is I need to tie this $2,500 to the dependent because we could have multiple dependents, but we're going to go ahead and tie it to the one that was at Sunny Days Care Provider, Kid Plus right there. We're going to put the $2,500 in, click Continue, and just drop down and click Continue here as well. Step 3 is not needed in this case, and continue past this page as well. One more Continue, and we are on to our education credit. 
You got the American Opportunity Credit, Lifetime Learning Credit, and Tuition and Fees Deduction. And for the purpose of this video, to keep it as short as possible, we're going to use Tuition and Fees. Click Continue, Continue, and we are essentially done with the return. The only thing we need to do is mark it for e-file by going through Summary and actually answering the 8867 EIC due diligence which if we're following this process over here on the left we are right here about to jump to right there the summary will give us the opportunity just to see how calculations worked and see the breakdown also helpful tools very important to note at any time if you've got a question how is this information carrying to the 1040 is it carrying over to the line I want does it look like I want am I happy with the presentation you can go to print or view your return from helpful tools and it's right there for you okay but I want to show you also the alternate method if we had clicked continue instead of clicking quick file what we would have been presented with is this exact screen so we just did all of our quick file forget about this refund over here forget about all the forms that we had entered we're just starting with a brand new return this is what we're presented with by clicking continue again I've got the please help me guide me section and I've got the enter myself now each section you go to deductions guide me enter myself I think other taxes has it there too nope miscellaneous nope really uh, just those first two because they're the biggest sections so if we go to deductions we click guide me it's gonna ask me some questions do you have any deductions related to your family probably in this section this is what it's talking about child care EIC adoption credit now we've already filled this out so it's gonna show it there for us um, let's go to our income if I click enter myself it's gonna present me with line 7 through line 21 of the 1040 just in more of a menu format if I need to do a schedule C a profit and loss from a business I can click begin and go ahead and, and handle that for our self-employed very very simple now let's say we've done everything we needed to do we've added all of our forms either by entering them here using the guide me or entering them over here on the right hand side you can see that it pulls up our list of forms okay I'm gonna drop down to summary let's take a look at that real quick and it gives us all of our calculations where did our what's the makeup of our income uh, what's the what's our AGI look like okay what's our tax credits total tax and payments our EIC calculation additional child tax credit and so forth click continue gonna drop into this next page is it's calculating which should be our 8867 EIC due diligence checklist and I'm gonna blow through this guy because I know all the answers and I'm just using tab and the uh, oops and Y and N on my keyboard and then taxpayer for T the last one is no nobody else can claim my kid and these are the documents that they brought in for validating the that that's the dependent I'm gonna cancel this section that's a miscellaneous statement on the right hand side under helpful tools there is an option to put in notes if you had any notes you'd like to enter now we've only done a federal return so um, send state only or do a state return is not going to present here but if you did have a state you wanted to enter you would go ahead and there would be an option to determine how you want the disbursement for the federal and the state refund here In this case we've only got a federal refund so we're going to use either a bank product which would be either the TFS ERC ERD or card anything other than that you need to collect from the taxpayer cash check or credit card for your fees if you do not select one of these three options your fees will not be deducted from their refund so again we've got a check you print in your office direct deposit in their account and a debit card you hand them immediately and they leave okay we're gonna do a check because it requires at least data entry for me I'm gonna click next we're gonna put in an email address we're gonna change these fees they're a little light want to go up to 500 bucks so you can see that it scratches out the old fees and then also we want to add the audit protection assistance to the uh, to the return there and that that varies depending on where you're at 
Okay, there's our fees. We're going to add in the disclosure for um, the 7216 signature. Going to click next. Going to put in our driver's license information because the rest of that's already completed, pulled over from the tax return. The issue date, I'm going to do direct entry here and then I'll show you the alternate method where you can see the calendar drop down. You can pick your year, pick your month, and pick the day of the expiration, and then you go ahead and just grab your state. Click Save, and we're on to the next section. Unless I screwed something up, number must be a valid phone number. That's the error check, making sure that we've uh, entered in all the appropriate information. So it must not like this one. Click Save. And we're on to the next phase. Now, we cannot show you really how to e-file e because the e-file is currently unavailable. As I believe I mentioned, uh, we're shooting this in or recording this in early December. But we can show you how to use the new mouse signature pad. Before you print your information and all your documents, you're going to click sign. You're going to click sign and have them sign right there. Now, it's not going to be beautiful, but it's legal. So that's what we want. Click Save, and it's now in the return. We go in and print our documents, and it would be there. Okay. Scrolling down, here's a summary of everything that we've entered on the last couple of pages. You want to mark that return complete if you're ready to send it. If you don't mark it, it's going to leave it in process. If you have a hierarchy review structure, um, then you would need to click ready for review so your manager knows to take a peek at it and then we would save and transmit now this reads save and exit but if we were in tax season and e-file was available we would save and transmit so I'm gonna save and exit here and go and take a peek at our client list and we should have a handful of returns in there looks like everybody's been busy knocking out some uh, practice returns here's the last one that we did and that's why it's on top okay Searching the database is very simple. If you type in the social, it'll start to narrow the field or just let you, or just search and oh, I didn't complete it all. Or just search it and enter the information in. If you needed to access one of these returns again, select on the right hand side and you're good to go. I'm gonna jump back to my office just by clicking your office. And that is what we wanted to demonstrate, just really a high-level overview of the two different ways to enter a tax return using the quick file or the, uh, the continue method, and just give you kind of a, a basis of understanding, some feel familiarity um, before you jump in there and start, start pounding out tax returns. Thank you very much for watching the video. Hope it was helpful, and uh, look forward to working with you this tax season. Thank you.